all of which are incredibly popular and are moving fast. So what I want you to know is that my complete focus is to try to make sure that when students graduate from here, they have good opportunities around the majors that they've picked, and that maybe even more importantly, we want to support the whole well-being of our students. And every decision we make is focused on trying to make sure you have a good experience, that you're successful, that you're retained, that you graduate in a timely fashion. Our numbers are phenomenal this year. In fact, we are record-setting record numbers in almost everything that we've done. Our grants activities and research activities uh, topped all of our expectations. We grew our, our grant awards by 25% last year. Crazy big number. Our enrollment set a record. 42,370 students. Again, amazing. Here's a good fact for you. For you. Since 2018, in the last three years, 2018, 19 is one year, 2021, 20, we have grown by 4,200 students, 4,200 students. Our graduate population is now at record levels. We have exceeded the number that we expected to get in 2025 this year, and it continues to surge. And I know that this is the undergraduate student government, but what I'm telling you is that the reputation that we have is drawing students in like never before. Um, in a typical fall, we might get a thousand applicants for spring for, for graduate students total. This year, already, we have 11,000 applicants for our graduate programs in the spring. Now, while you're undergrads, what that suggests is that on an international level, our reputation is skyrocketing. On an international level, at a national level, people are coming to the university because they recognize the value of our degrees. We welcome the largest ever freshman class this year. Transfer population, a little, little shaky. Um, transfer uh, enrollment at community colleges is down nationwide, nearly 10%. So we're a little bit worried about that. But in terms of long-term growth and stability, we're feeling very positive. The growth that we've had brought in $27 million more from our legislature, which is great news. And what I'll say to all of you is we have several focused strategic planning initiatives, which I was at least partially asked to talk about today. Um, and we've done, I want to give you a view of this though. Um, three years ago, four years ago, we began really moving retention initiatives. We put in something called EAP Navigate, the new uh, data analytics and predictive analytics program. Advisors all have access to it. You can have the, the, the app on your iPhones. It can help you track your progress, uh, the best decisions that you can make. It can help you communicate with your advisor and move forward with your degree plans. Our retention had been doing really well in about a three year period. We went from 78% freshman retention to 82% FTIC retention. Last year, COVID knocked our socks off a little and did all around the country. But we'll have uh, the year after that, we ran an affordability initiative. We're trying to expand open educational resources so that we can reduce the cost of tax free. I mean, we've got one professor in chemistry who used open educational resources for the general chemistry class. Now that book costs somewhere between three and four hundred bucks. Uh, over a thousand students have taken it. Over three hundred thousand dollars have been saved. And we're trying to do this now for each of the major classes that we have. It's going to take a while. Uh, we've got, we're, we're subsidizing faculty to gather open educational resources from the higher education coordinating board and other areas where we can provide you with free books. Now, that's not going to solve all the world's problems, but imagine you have one or two classes. You could save 400 to $800 per semester. At the end of a semester, $400 to $800 can make a really big difference in people who are stripping and saving to try to make sure that they can get through. Uh, Elizabeth's shop has opened up uh, a food pantry that's doing remarkably well for food insecurity. We're working on housing insecurity as best we can. But that's a hard one because most of our uh, residence hall spaces are full. Nevertheless, we've got transitional accommodations that we've been working on 
So we can help people suddenly find themselves in health and safety. We have a, a lot of different activities going, but the one that I'm happiest about right now is that we've taken our student accounting and our student financial aid center, we've combined them into an integrated financial aid one stop. The work's not done there, we're starting to hire a director for it right now, but we don't want you to have to go from office to office to office to figure out what you have to pay, what your financial aid is, and to answer your fiscal questions. We want you to have that support. We want that support to be tied into our student money management center, which is an award-winning center, to try to make it really easy for you to negotiate the fiscal challenges of being in school. Our HERF funding, our higher education uh, emergency relief funding, the federal government last year and the last 18 months has already awarded over $70 million grants of aid to students, which is a monster number. And about 30, 35 million more will be awarded post that. So we're doing everything we can to try to make this university affordable. And here's the good news. Since 2019, we've seen the actual student, average student debt drop by a couple thousand bucks. That's extraordinary. We were hoping to just keep it uh, no greater than inflation. But we moved from about $26,000 average student debt to about 24,000. So we're trying to develop for you a sense of what the value of college is. What's the cost? What's the outcome? Final piece is what's the outcome? And we need to address the question of, as the question has been asked all across the country, is it worth going into debt to get a higher education degree? And a lot of people want to argue and fight with that. It's not a good fight because we know that people who get a college degree work more than a million dollars more in their lifetime. We know that they'll have a better sense of well-being, they'll have a better chance of getting the job that they want. Uh, what we are here to do is to help build your career. Uh, like many of you, uh, how many of you are first-generation college students? Great, me too. I was destined to be uh, a laborer in Buffalo, New York. By the way, laboring and digging ditches in the winter in Buffalo, New York is not a pleasant experience. Uh, I graduated from college and as a first-gen student, and I had no clue, zero understanding of how to get a job. Just kind of got shoved out the door. Didn't have a right resume. I didn't know what a resume was, to be really honest. I didn't know what a curriculum detail was. I didn't know how to do a job search. I didn't know how to interview. I didn't know how to apply. I didn't know what kind of marketable skills I had. That was kind of a mess. As a result, I went through about 14 to 15 different jobs before I finally settled down and went, I'm going to go back and go to grad school because now I know what I want to do. It took me that long. We hope you don't have to repeat the kinds of things I went through. So this year, we've launched a new career professional development initiative. Uh, we are reorganizing uh, with the help of student affairs and academic affairs how we're offering career counseling to you. It will be less at a career center and more in your college. So we're putting 30, that's three times 10, uh, 30 embedded counselors into the colleges that can directly support you, help you with your career exploration and activities. We're developing a first year seminar program uh, that will be either a zero credit course or integrated into the professional development for freshmen uh, in each of the colleges. And that will expose you to virtually all the basics that you need to understand and open the door for you to understand how your college curriculum really supports you. So what will you get out of these experiences? We want to be able to guarantee that every student can write a resume and have that resume be read, proved, and approved by our career counselors or faculty. We want to make sure that everyone understands what their marketable skills are. Those are the soft skills that employers are looking for. We want people to know how to do a job search and have done career exploration. We want you to know how to write a cover letter, how to interview, how to negotiate a salary. So this is what's in store for us now, and we're working quite hard on this plan. I believe that we'll be hiring a new director for this uh, disrupted, in a very positive way, creatively disrupted, uh, career services program that we're offering. And what we want to do is help out with other areas too. For example, um, we know that you'll go through many career transitions. Your generation will face the most rapidly evolving job market that we've ever seen. 
but we hope is that you'll be able to negotiate transitions, whether they're welcomed or unwelcomed, because jobs are changing. The future of work is changing. Business intelligence, applying artificial intelligence, uh, all kinds of analytics are changing the skills you're going to need when you enter the job market. And we're going to try to help those who want to be able to have manifold skills to attain. Um, a lot of students have to take internships, and some of those internships are paid. Most of them should be paid. However, there's areas where they're not. For example, if you're a student teacher, you're not getting paid to be a student teacher. There's a number of other areas in the public sector that don't get paid internships. Uh, while I can't fund, and we can't fund everyone who gets an unpaid internship, I'm working this year and creating a $300,000 pool. I want to offer 300 students $1,000 scholarships that will help ease them because many of the students who take these unpaid internships will have to quit a job in order to take that internship so that they can reach their career professional goals. So we're trying to do a whole lot of things. We're trying to help. We're open to your suggestions on how we can do better and how we can improve. And with that, I'll just say we're here first to support your success. To help you thrive in the effort that you need work. Anything you want to bring to us that helps you do that is of interest to me, is of interest to Elizabeth Witt, our VP for Student Affairs, and to our Provost Jennifer Paul. So your suggestions, questions, comments, and support are welcome. We would like to be a team here. We'd like to be a team that's working to make sure that you're more successful, attaining and graduate in a timely fashion. Graduate with a minimum amount of debt, and then you get a good job when you graduate. So that's what we're here for. It's not a perfect process, and it probably never will be, but we can make it better than it's been in the past. That's our goal. Uh, I, I'm pretty much done now, Devin. Uh, is it Q and A Q&A time, or should I just uh, gracefully fade off the stage? <laughs> I would like to thank Dr. Smontras for being here and <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'll go ahead. <laughs> All right. I would like to introduce our senior vice president of student affairs, Dr. Elizabeth Wynn. Hang up on us and some six feet away. Um, and he talked about some things I was going to talk about, which is great. So I'll reinforce a little bit that I'll try not to duplicate. One of the things that Devin and Casey and David, David asked me to do was tell you about why I love UNT. And there's a whole heck of a lot of reasons, um, but they all involve you. Um, Playing football is one of them. I love watching football games. I love bonfire, and I can't wait for bonfire to be coming up here pretty soon. We need all the rain so that we can burn, so I'm excited about that. We should have a regular bonfire this coming November, so I'm excited. Hope you guys are too. But when I started working here at UNT, and you mentioned being a first-generation college student, that's me. Um, and I didn't think that I fit in with most of the people that went to college. I didn't understand a lot of what was happening behind the scenes. I knew to go to class and I knew that I was supposed to make good grades, but I wasn't sure what to do with it afterwards. And so when I came to UNT 25 years ago, one of the things that was so, um, I think, unexpected for me was to have a population that reflected kind of my journey and my work. And that continues to happen here at UNT. We continually become more and more diverse. We continually become more and more first generation. And I feel like that is um, many of our life's calling is here to support um, our students. And so I think that's what I love most about UNT. We have a very caring, supportive environment, and hopefully one where we help you navigate all the challenges that you might be facing, because we know you're going to have them. Anyone expects to come to college and think things are perfect, it will be perfect. That's not the case. They won't be. And for many of us first-generation college students, if we trip up, if we fail, if we hit some sort of problem or challenge, we think, well, maybe college isn't for me and I'm not cut out for this. And that's not true. Um, defining 
um, a, a, a problem or a challenge doesn't define who you are as a college student. It's your ability to get back up and move and continue that defines your ability. And that's what our employers are looking for. And so all of what we're trying to do is make sure that you have that job that you want, that career that you want, you have that future that you want, that, that dream that you've created in your mind of what you want to have in your world is what we're trying to do. So let me highlight a couple things in the Division of Student Affairs. I've got some handouts on the table if you want to take them. All of this is on our website. Love for you to go there, studentaffairs.unt.edu. But let me highlight a couple of resources that are available for you. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Dean Students Office. Dr. Mo, Mo, my mama Maureen McGinnis is here. So, Mo, do you want to wave to folks? People know who you are. Um, so, a couple things on the Dean Students Office I think are really important that show our caring uh, and supportive environment um, has to do with helping students through challenges that they may face. We have a Seeking Options and Solutions program. Um, they have the food pantry that the president mentioned. We have a care team that helps to support students through crisis. Through the survivor advocate program. So many of the challenges that students might face, they get support from the Dean of Students Office. Um, great help and great um, ability to provide you with the things and tools that you need to continue navigating college. Um, so that environment is really important. Um, our Student Health and Wellness Center has become more in the forefront than ever before. Most times students don't know we have a student health and wellness center until they get sick, and that's usually a few weeks into the semester. And I think all of you know we have it now because you've tested there, you've been vaccinated there, maybe you'll get a booster there. But know too that once we get post-COVID, and I sure hope that happens soon, that they have other resources for you. There are physicians there. If you are sick, you can go there. They have labs, they have radiology, they have a pharmacy. So lots of places and lots of things that they can do to help you. In addition to, if you want a massage, you can go there. If you need help from a dietitian, you can go there. So lots of cool things available to students in that particular area. Another area that I think has become more and more important and continues to do so is our counseling and testing services area. So it's been a challenge for all of us. And I think we're seeing more and more of that. How many of you are sophomores at UNT? A lot of you. How many of you feel like like this is your first year in college because it's so different from last year? Navigating this arena has been a very difficult one, and we know that. Um, but you throw on a pandemic, you throw on the issues that we've been dealing with, the racial issues that happen across our country, and our support, lack of support for our um, African American and Latinx students has been a challenge. And so you add all of that on top of the normal things that happen in a college career. And it's a difficult time. Our counseling center is working to support students. Many of the students they see are in crisis, and our hope is that you don't wait until you're in crisis to see them. But we have licensed professional counselors available in our counseling center. If you need that support, go to it. If you need support after hours, you can call their phone number, and it'll direct you to a counselor all the time. It won't be somebody here, but you'll have somebody available to you even after hours. We want to make sure that's available. And we'll continue to do that. For those of you that would prefer to have virtual services, you can still meet with a counselor virtually. And so please take advantage of our, our services there. Um, we don't want you to wait till you're in crisis, until it's, you're in a, in a deeper hole. We want to make sure that you are um, moving forward with the best and most positive outlook that you can possibly counseling and testing will help you do that. Um, in this last year, we created a new program called uh, we're working on uh, counseling for diverse student populations. Hired a staff member in the process of hiring another staff member. We already have a couple of staff members in the counseling center that were focused on our diverse student populations. But now we have this program that we're combining research with. We don't know that there's anybody in the country that's doing this. And so we're excited about the program and we're excited about the impact that it can make. So yes, we want to make sure that we have um, counselors that look like our diverse students on our campus, but we also want to make sure that we are doing with that we're supporting them in a way that's beneficial and in a way that contributes to the research to help others in the future. And that's what we're hoping will happen with that program. It started just last January and we're very excited about it getting up and moving and going. It's a great, great program. Um, Neil mentioned the First Generation Success Center. Um, that um, area is here in the Union, the third floor. So I saw all of the hands raised. If you need a connection spot, if you need resources and support, that First Generation uh, Success Center is here on the third floor. 
Um, and it is a great new space. We're very excited about the people there, about um, Desiree Pedrone and the work that she's doing along with the other students um, that are there and helping. Um, we have um, a couple of, you may not know that we have student legal services available for our students. Um, these services are free to you, they'll help you. So whether it's landlord tenant issues, um, whether or not you're having a challenge with an auto accident, any type of legal issue that you're having, including immigration issues. We actually hired somebody a couple of years ago to focus on immigration issues. Um, we want students to be able to get that support and help. So remember, it's all about making sure that we help you bridge all of the challenges that you face so that you continue on in your education. So those services are available to you as well. Our Office of Disability Access helps all of our students with disabilities um, to get the accommodations that they need, whether it's accommodations for testing, whether or not we have students who are hearing impaired, physically impaired, their ability to navigate campus is important, and not just the physical campus, but what are we doing to navigate the virtual campus? So for students who have visual impairments, the technology that's available for them for some of the classes, we need to make sure that we're helping students in that regard too. They're also doing education with our students with disabilities, but also with the greater student population to understand how we can best support our peers and our colleagues that need that um, area. Um, last but not least, well, two more things. Student Money Management Center, um, the president mentioned the financial support we're providing for our students. Uh, student Money Management Center is one of those locations, and so they have peers that can walk you through financial management strategies. Please utilize that resource. It's a really good one for you, um, as well as they have some loan programs, too, for financial issues that you may be having. Lots of ways that you can become engaged on campus. I think you know Dr. Krista Coffey is your advisor for SGA. She oversees student activities. Many organizations, over 400 student organizations on our campus. I think we have 400 registered, do we? Normally about 450. Normally about 450. We're getting there. Getting back into the habit of organizations registering. But lots of ways for you to be engaged across campus in student activities or our Center for Leadership and Service. So if you prefer to do uh, volunteer type of activities. We have that available to you, alternative spring breaks, lots of opportunities for you to get back to campus and to the local community. But many ways for you to be engaged and they're really important for us. Dining is a great place. How many of you eaten at Eagle Landing? Cool place, huh? When we have students that are involved in the process and they give us their ideas of what they want, it turns out really, really well. And Eagle Landing is an example of that. Mean Greens also, first vegan, uh, vegan cafeteria in the country. We also have, have, have any of you eaten at Kerr West? Maybe, a couple of people. Eight allergen free um, cafeteria as well. It's the first one in Texas. So we're trying to make sure that we're meeting all of the dietary needs and desires of our campus community. But did you know that we have our own bakery on campus? We make our own hamburger buns and hot dog buns. Clark Bakery is a really cool place, and we're going to be bringing that more into the union. So hopefully in the next six months, you'll see like a bakery shop open in the union that will allow you to be able to do that. Donuts even may be made here. How cool is that? So you'll need to go to the rec center and work out if you're going to eat the donuts. But the food here truly is great. You may have seen that they did a Dine and Be Kind program, and that's all in support of the President's initiative on housing and food insecurity. So many of you gave to that program so that you can support other students. We're grateful for that and we'll continue to do that, grow the food pantry as well as opportunities for what we can do to provide housing and temporary housing for our students. Um, and I think that is all for me. Um, Division of Student Affairs is, help, is here to help you and to support you. We want you to be successful. So thank you guys for the time. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. We can get another round of applause for Dr. Schmantras. All right. At this time, this is going to be a really good transition. We're going to be showing a video of the executive staff. You know, we'll get to Devin and uh, David in a little bit, but this will highlight some of the positions we have within um, the administration, within our executive branch specifically. Again, to the state of the undergraduate student body. I'm Casey Amenis, the Chief of Staff of the Student Government Association. I manage the logistics, event planning, and financial needs of the SGA. I have a strong emphasis on making sure 
that if the organization runs well internally, everyone within has a platform to do things outside the organization for over 30,000 undergraduate students. Because I can't do everything and be everywhere, Dev and David have entrusted me with supporting and assisting a staff of six to take on important roles in advocacy, outreach, and funding distribution. Although the staff runs me around on a daily basis, um, they've been behind some of the amazing events this semester um, and putting together programs and events for later this year. And I know they have a lot in store going forward. So enough of me, meet my amazing staff. Hi everyone, my name is Maya Stevens and I serve as outreach director and one of my passions include making sure students feel safe and comfortable on campus. Hi, I'm Bella Armenta and I'm district allocations director for SGA. One of my passions on campus is ensuring that students have access to adequate resources throughout their time in year three. Hi, my name is Zoe Brown. I'm the co-director of Choice and Inclusion here at SGA. Um, although I have a lot, I would say my biggest passions here on campus would be mental health and full representation for all students. My name is Alexis Hopkins. I'm the director of diversity and inclusion for the Student Government Association. And one of my biggest passions on campus is helping out people who may need assistance whether it be unhoused individuals, food insecure individuals, or just people who just need general help. I love doing that so much. What's up everybody? My name is Jermaine Turner. I go by JT. This year I serve as the Student Government Association Intern Program Director. And one of my passions is being able to pour into all of the upcoming student leaders on campus, giving them tools not only to be an SGA, but also involve themselves as a student leader on campus in general. Hi, my name is Matthew Noe, and I'm the Communications Director of the SGA. One of my biggest initiatives is just seeing how my UX background can help me with my job. Uh, I enjoy gathering feedback and opinions from coworkers and students on basically everything I do. Why I joined SGA is because I want to be a leader on campus. I want to do so much of my time here, and I've gotten to work with so many great people and be involved with so many great things as my sorority as well as being a part of NT40 and just so many great things that SGA has given me the opportunity to do. And I love my job. I love doing it and I love having my co-director Zoe Brown. She makes me laugh all the time. She's so sweet to me. And I know I couldn't do this job alone. And the fact that I have a co-director with me makes me so happy. Uh, so I guess that's why I love SGA. One of the key reasons why I joined the Student Government Association my freshman year as an intern was to be able to understand how our student body worked and how you can advocate best for the community around you. One of the key goals I have this year as the intern program director is to equip our interns with all the tools needed to not only be leaders within inside of our Student Government Association, but also outside of our Student Government Association in their respective organizations or on campus jobs. Also, one reason why I love my job is because we have intimate uh, intern program meeting meetings where we get to pour into the interns, give them tools for resume building, uh, give them tools for internships, scholarship opportunities, and also just becoming the best student leader possible within the time period at UT. Education director at the SGA. I handle the social media, the website, the design work, the photography, cinematography, and marketing strategy for the SGA. I also manage a comms team that helps me with all of this. The biggest goal I have for this year is utilizing a human-centric approach to make sure we're connecting with students. We want feedback on the things that we do, and we want to test out each change to get insight before presenting something official. In the same sense, reaching out to the student body has never been SGA's strength, but me and my team are here to try to fix that. We do this because we believe in this community of students, and we've already seen what they can make and accomplish. So if you see us around, come talk and see how you can help the community. Thank you. In my position, I work on diversity inclusion by coordinating events as they relate uh, to students on campus. So for instance, I partnered with a Pride Alliance this past month, and we had a self-defense course taught by UTPD officers. Um, in doing so, we hope that we can get some students to be able to master skills that be able to protect themselves from potential attackers on campus. Um, in the near future, we are hoping to have a town hall event with UTPD as well. And this will be co-sponsored by BSU, the Multicultural Center, the Dean of Students, and as, as well as the TPD. Um, by doing so, we hope to better relationships between the officers as well as the student body and the faculty on campus. As far as my agenda for this semester, it includes working with different administration and officials to ensure that international students don't have to face certain barriers when they transition on the campus. That may look like resources or programs that are already offered that they may not be aware of. I also want to work with different organizations to ensure that documented and undocumented students on campus are given the proper support and care that they need. Um, lastly, I do want to work with the Native American Student Association 
um, just to increase the visibility and acknowledgement in our campus. All in all, my mission on this campus is to make sure that every individual feels like their perspective is being heard and incorporated into the progress of the student body. As well as, I want to make sure that everybody feels like they're not being demeaned, or discredited, or discriminated against. With that being said, if you have any suggestions, comments, or concerns that you feel like needs to be heard, you're more than welcome to email me at sgainclusion at unc.edu. Thank you. As Student Allocations Director for SGA, I oversee two programs, the Eagles Nest Fund and the Rock Travel Grant. These resources are two great tools for students and registered student organizations. The Eagles Nest Fund is open to any registered student organization looking for funding for events they're hosting this year. Eagles Nest events must be open to the entire student body and not only student members, but everyone attending the event. Eagles Nest funding is allocated up to $1,000, but sometimes more if approved by the SGA president. The Rock Travel Grant is there to assist student organizations and individuals looking to go to a conference that will not only benefit themselves, but the UT as well. Funding for Rock Travel Grant is usually based on airfare, lodging, Ubers, lifts, food, and other miscellaneous items such as registration fees for the conference. This is a great way for students to go to a conference and learn stuff that they would not always be able to learn in a classroom setting. Applying for both the Eagles Nest Fund and the Rock Travel Grant is a pretty simple process. First, you have to attend an SGA resource meeting held every Tuesday in the language building in room 323 at 3 p.m. If you cannot make that time, please email me at eaglesnest at unt.edu to set up an alternative time where we can get you a private meeting. After that, there are two applications, one for Ralph and one for Eagles Nest. You will find them on the org suit under the Student Government Association page. The applications may be a little time consuming, but we are asking for important information like budgets, event location, where is the conference, depending on what budget, what application you are applying for. After that, if everything is approved, you will be invited to either the Eagles Nest or the Route Travel Committee. Um, there, the committee made up of students will go and decide whether you're getting funding or not. After that, I will be in touch with you to figure out how we can put your event on or how we can get you to your conference. Thank you. If you have any questions, email me at eaglesnest at unt.edu or route at unt.edu. Thank you. My position for Outreach Director entails collaborating with other student organizations on campus with the common goal of bettering student experience. So far, SJ has collaborated with Counseling and Testing Services Fresh Check Day, which is a suicide awareness day that provides mental health resources for students on campus. I'm also in charge of running town halls, and I'm proud to say that we've already had 14 town halls during our resident town hall circuit. Town halls address and acknowledge student concerns, and we do this using an interactive survey and using the answers we get and the feedback we hear from, we can create solutions that can benefit the student body. I'm also in charge of running advocacy committees. Advocacy committees are in charge of working on passion projects and specific issues for the designated committee. We have a wide variety of committees, including disability inclusion, queer trans advocacy, as well as campus and student safety. Overall, my goal in STA is to create a better campus experience and make sure students' voices are heard. We aren't just members of the SGA or executive members of the organization. We are also students who exam Cran and Willis and wait in long lines for Starbucks right before class. We're wanting to make a better environment for the undergraduate community, and that will continue to be our mission because that is something we all experience. And please, if you need anything, you're more than welcome to reach out to anyone you just saw for help or direction or resources. Thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of the evening. All right, this moves into our next session of speaking. So, at this point, I would like to introduce our Vice President of the Student Government Association and the Undergraduate Student Body. How are we doing? Doing good? Can we get a round of applause for our amazing exec? Team. Y'all are awesome. Yes. All right. Uh, I'm a little nervous, so bear with me. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is David Munoz Serabia, and I serve as the vice president of the undergraduate student body and the Student Government Association. I was born in Bradenton, Florida, and raised in Plano, Texas. I graduated from Plano East senior high school in 2019, and I joined the Meet Greek family 
that fall. I've been involved in the resident hall association for Joe Green Hall as the first coordinator of outreach, ambassador and senator for the College of Science, and senator for the College of Merchandising, Hospitality, and Tourism. This year, I have the privilege of being a UPC member, which I call UPS for short, facilitator for the first Latinx student experience and Latinx Hispanic student union chief of staff. I think the theme for today was everyone for the most part in this room is a first generation college student. I am also in that same group. I'm also a son of immigrants and proud to be queer. For many, we are the first in our families to pursue higher education. The first to be in spaces that did not have someone who shared our experiences or perspectives. The, the ones that will bring great change and create a new chapter for our family legacy. The reason why this is important is because people's stories matter. Stories contain importance as they reveal the journeys we have taken and how they have shaped us into the person we are today. My role is to empower the Senate, assist the president, and to be an advocate for the student body. Devin and I ran to make a meaningful impact, which can only be achieved through actionable change. One of these actionable changes can occur with the way in which we address transportation concerns on campus. I currently serve on the Transportation Advisory Committee. Transportation is one issue that we, as UNT students, all deal with. My role in the committee is to bring the student perspective to the table. A priority for our administration is the equitable and affordable access to transportation on campus. Denton County Transportation Authority, or DCTA, has gone through many changes. For example, I'm replacing connect routes, which are fixed bus routes in Denton with the GoZone program. The program started in the summer of 2021 and is currently running in parallel with the current connect routes. This program works like Uber and Lyft and other paid to ride services. There are many questions about the long-term plan of the program. How much will students pay to use the service? What about the safety precautions that are in place? How will this affect students who rely on paid to ride services as a source of income? Before this program was launched, UT students were able to utilize connect routes freely with their student ID. As a university, we need to ensure a cost-effective solution that will best serve the student body. Organizational involvement is an important part of the student experience at UNT. As a Student Government Association, we believe in uniting and empowering organizations to fulfill our collective purpose of supporting students. We can achieve this through the creation of the Eagles Council. The Eagles Council is the manifestation of our vision to create a coalition of student organization to support each other. Following COVID-19, it is all the more important that we stick together as a UNT community to combat challenges. This is the important role that organizations play. We'll be announcing a plan for the um, implement, uh, implementation for this program at a later date. As I mentioned earlier, I work alongside the Senate. Hey, Senate. Um, the Senate is comprised of 45 representatives from each college, academy, and campus. Senators connect with their constituencies and collaborate with fellow senators to propose a positive change in their respective college, which comprises UNT. This year, we have new faces in the Senate that are passionate and, and want to drive and bring meaningful change. The Senate has passed F-2021 R1, the Catalini-Henderson Resolution, which called for a change in UNT policy 
to add an appeals process for Title IX concerns and advocate for an environment in which students do not have to hide their identity. In today's, in today's Senate meeting, legislation was passed to have a membership in the Texas um, Student Government Coalition. This coalition would allow for a broader advocacy on behalf of UNT students by the SGA. The SGA would coordinate with other universities within the state of Texas to be a unified um, voice, which would positively impact Texas higher education. Additionally, the Senate introduced legislation to call for an audit to review correct placement of Braille uh, signage in all UNT buildings to ensure students with, with a visual impairment have equitable access. Another major responsibility that I have as vice president is to inform students about the Senate and their responsibilities. We currently now have 18 out of 45 seats filled in the Senate. I just want to shout out that we recently appointed Senator uh, Allen back for the call for the honors college. So I don't know if you want to give her a round of applause. Give them a round of applause. Um, we are on. Um, we currently have some colleges that are underrepresented. As I mentioned earlier, we only have 18 out of 45 seats filled. My goal by the end of the year is to reach a full Senate. Reaching a full Senate will provide a more accurate representation of UNT. I will continue to also take steps um, to make sure Senate is more accessible to the student body. One priority of mine is continuing a hybrid model for our Senate meetings. COVID-19 has taught us that we can connect in various ways. By providing a virtual option for our Senate meetings, we can best reach our constituency. As we move towards a new era of student life, I know we can overcome any obstacle that comes our way. Being a student is never easy. But that is why we must sit together as a community. I hope to see you all around campus. If y'all see me, say hi. Sometimes I have my earbuds in, so just like stop me. But I would love to talk, love to talk and hear what y'all have to say in your in your journey. Because like I said earlier, journeys do matter and stories as well. Um, but that is my speech. I'm going to bring Casey back, our amazing chief of staff, to the podium. It's time for my hour speech. Kidding, that's a wrap. Um, but at this time, I would like to introduce our president of the undergraduate student body, Devin Skinner. <laughs> well, good evening. I know this is probably not an Indian shirt by most, but I actually like the weather that's going on, or at least what's going on. I did get a little drenched. That was unfortunate. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I just love this time of the year and figured I'd comment on that. But anyways, good evening. My name is Devin Skinner, and I serve as the president of the Undergraduate Student Body and the Student Government Association. My role is to help advocate for your interests and needs on campus throughout your time at UNT. Before I get into what our student government has been up to, let me tell you a little bit about my personal journey through college. I graduated from Foster Ridge High School and took Keller ISD in 2016, and I started college at Tarrant County College Northeast. I graduated from TCC in 2018 and became a part of our campus community here at UNT. At UNT, I have been involved in the National Society for Leadership and Success, eventually serving as its president and have been involved in other organizational events. In the SGA, I started out as an intern, and we have our intern class here in 2018. There we go. I eventually became a senator representing the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences, aka class, and now I serve as your president. Throughout all of this, I've worked a part-time job at Tarrant County, have commuted from Fort Worth, and have never taken more than nine credit hours in a semester. I could never take the 15 or 18 that 
so that my other counterparts uh, have done. Throughout that time, I wanted to be a professional photographer, a high school history teacher, and I've wanted to go into government work. There have been many times when I questioned my own class choices and whether or not I was fit to go into the field that I wanted to go into. As a sixth year senior, I've seen my own friends graduate before me and begin successful careers in the gangs. As a class, we have experienced unique challenges, such as COVID-19 and environmental extremes, which have impacted our ability to learn as students. I mention all that because I've seen firsthand some of the types of issues that students face on at UNC. However, it is important to remember that I cannot know the experiences of everyone at UNC. Perhaps one of the most valuable and difficult parts of the job as a member of the Student Government Association is listening to the experiences of others. It shows you an entire world of experience that you wouldn't know had you not talked to the person sitting next to you on a bus or in a class. The Student Government Association is the official voice of the undergraduate student body. We communicate on your behalf to university officials, city council members, county commissioners, and other outside entities. Specifically, our constitution, I know I'll get some laughs at this, but is that our most important purpose? That, above all, the Student Government Association shall ensure that the voice of the student body is always heard at the University of North Texas. When we hear a concern or hear an idea for the betterment of students at UNC, that's input we value and emphasize in our work. So, big question, how does the Student Government Association make that advocacy happen? Well, I'll start with a little bit of the funding, the boring stuff. The SGA receives funding from student service fees. Students pay $13.41 per credit hour per semester. So take 15 hours, we can do the math. Of the total amount that SSF gets, we were allocated $104,690.12 for the 2021-2022 fiscal year. With that money, we are able to develop programs, hire staff, and have meetings to ensure that your interests are heard at UNT. As of now, the SGA has been $1,967.65 of that allocation in this fiscal year. We will continue to spend in an intentional way to benefit the student body. If you would like to see how we spend, what we spend our money on, you can go to our website at sga.unc.edu and click on the budget button. It's just on the home page. This document contains an introduction statement by our chief of staff, Casey Jimenez, who, been, who you've been hearing throughout the night. The budget for the SGA as approved by the Senate, thank you, Senate, and our inaugural running expenditure list. This list is an account of every purchase made in the Student Government Association for the duration of our administration. If you want to see what we're spending money on, be sure to check out that list. We are also stepping up our outreach initiatives. Matthew No, our communications director, the one who's going around taking pictures. Uh, we got uh, John Anderson, who's from the NT Daily. Hi, John. And we also have Matthew No, who's our SGA photographer. Um, that's our communications director. And Maya Stevens, who you heard from earlier on the video, is our outreach director. Both of them have done fantastic work in our public engagement initiatives. We still have progress to make, though. Matthew is working on data analysis on how to better communicate with the student body. Maya just recently, as, as they mentioned, concluded our town hall circuit at most of our dorm halls at UNT. They're working on aggregating the data we received from those events. The more that we hear from students, the better data we receive and the better advocacy we can have. The SGA is also host, working to host events and participate in events, which gives students an opportunity to relax and have fun. Part of the student experience is about getting to meet new people and enjoy life. The SGA wants to emphasize and empower this healthy mindset by providing events for that purpose. In addition, we are hosting and funding events which impact and assist students through the challenges that, that they face. Both types of events are important, and we look forward to prioritizing these experiences for the student body. We advocate for communicate communities on campus through committees as well. As of this state of the undergraduate student body, we have approved 52 applications for committees and that currently have 96 committee seats filled so far, with some people serving on more than one committee. We have advocacy committees, which focus on representation of specific communities on campus, and departmental committees, which focus on recommendations to administration on specific matters in 
in the university policy. On our advocacy committees, 12.5% of our appointments were executive branch members. And on our departmental committees, 49% of our appointments were also executive branch members, which is a decrease from 88% in the previous year. We told the student body in our campaign that we would bring students to the table, and we have had especially high rates of non-active SGA students participating on these committees while also ensuring that our executive branch is staying active in the UNT community. David touched on this earlier. I'll, I'll kind of uh, rebrief on this. Um, but thank you to the hard work of the Texas A&M Student Government Association. They've done fantastic work to get the Texas Student Government Coalition up and running. Just today, as David mentioned, I have introduced legislation in the UNT SGA Senate to join the TSGC as an organizational member. That was approved by the Senate, and I do appreciate the Senate's support for this measure. It is my hope and expectation that this symbiotic relationship will improve the advocacy of our constituency at the state level of policy development. Becoming a member of the TSGC was one of our platform points, and I'm glad to provide progress updates on that. SGA has made unprecedented strides in accessibility. As David mentioned in his address, we have made significant improvements in the accessibility of our Senate meetings. David also included a table of contents and timestamps on our Senate videos so that students can easily access specific sections of our meetings. Now, if you've ever seen any of our recordings, you know those things can be two to four hours long, so having those contents is very helpful. Thank you, David. Uh, of course, our office is open to, uh, for students to visit. We are working diligently to make the office available for as long as possible during the day so that there's someone you can talk to at your convenience. Anyone who knows Casey, David, or I, we spend a lot of time in the office, and we will probably be there. Uh, you can find the executive branch's office hours on our website under the Meet the Team tab, and by clicking on our profile picture, so then it'll show when specifically we're, we're in the office. COVID-19 has had a lasting impact on, UNT, on the UNT student body. Whether you are a seasoned senior, I am, or an incoming freshman, uh, you have had COVID-19 impact you one way or the other. We have been communicating with UNT administration on ongoing COVID initiatives and policies, and I am personally glad to see our COVID cases trending down. It was important to me that we reinstate the COVID statistical data on the Student Affairs website dedicated to COVID response. This has been very helpful in seeing what works and what doesn't work at UNC, and I am very grateful to Student Affairs for re-implementing that on their website. However, we must remain diligent in our response to COVID and be prepared to take the necessary action should this trend change. I will always advocate for student safety as paramount to educational success at UNT. Recently, I announced the creation of the uh, Commission on SGA Governing Documents. This commission is designed to review the student constitution and bylaws for improvement opportunities and revisions. During this process, I intend on advocating for the creation of the Office of the Inspector General. This position would be a judicial branch entity and would be solely responsible for holding the SGA accountable. Accountability is very important for our administration, and we have improved our transparency measures dramatically this year. With the return to in-person Senate meetings, we could have returned to what we had been doing and host only in-person Senate meetings. After all, that's what we've done every year before COVID. Instead, we have implemented virtual attendance options for senators and guests so that you don't have to physically be in the chamber to voice your concerns. Further, we are consistently updating our website so that you know what we're up to. I would like to take this time to appreciate Casey's hard work, and it is very hard work, trust me, I've seen it, on keeping our running expenditure list updated so that the student body knows what we're spending money on when we spend it. We are in the process of developing a town hall calendar and structure which will involve opportunities for students to voice their concerns about what SGA, about the SGA and how it's operating. So here are some things that our administration is planning to address for the rest of the year. We plan on discussing a payment plan structure for parking pass payment with UNG transportation. And I'll also preface that there are some of these items that we have not had meetings yet on. These are things that we're going to be working on throughout the year. Um, and as we have these meetings, we're going to have discussions about feasibility, about uh, the uh, priority of funding for some of these initiatives. Uh, we're looking forward to those meetings. 
But yeah, um, a payment plan structure for uh, parking passes. Parking passes can be very expensive for students. So we want to make sure that uh, we're providing as many opportunities for that to be an easy process for uh, students as possible. We want to reinstate the SGA safety tours. We're going to uh, have a meeting with uh, facilities soon about re-implementing that in the fall. For those of you that don't know, safety tours are an opportunity for members of the SGA to walk across campus and, look and identify any areas of concern that the university can address. We want to discuss the implementation of a formal bike share service. So uh, for students who were here before COVID, there was a service called VioRide, and that was a bike share service that you could utilize uh, for a, a small fee every time that you use it. And uh, VioRide went away. Uh, and so we want to look at having a structured a solution to uh, biking on campus as another means of transportation for students. We want to do just so back in the day, uh, there was a whole discussion about IX accreditation with uh, the Counseling and Testing Services Center. The biggest concern um, at the time from, from what we I have been hearing as an intern and, and eventually as a senator was the counselor to student ratio. Our counselors do amazing work at UMC. We want to make sure that they have the resources necessary, especially post COVID, to be able to operate to the best of their ability for their sake and for students' sake. And so we're going to have a conversation with CTS about what their funding needs are and how we can best assist the CTS with um, having the services that they need to benefit students. In addition to the mental health concerns on campus, we want to develop some sort of focus group to assess a, the general mental state of the student body on an annual basis and identify specific criteria or specific areas of concerns that we can address uh, based on a large pool of data. We want to discuss the addition of more student seats on committees with appropriate administration officials. When we talk about bringing students to the table, that, there need, that needs to be an actual table. We need to actually be meeting together to discuss real policy changes in real environments. And uh, I've had fantastic interactions uh, with the university administration this year. I'm looking forward to having those conversations. Um, Dave touched on this a little bit. We want to develop and execute a, a program called the Equals Council. That's something that's very important to us because a lot of us in this room have been involved in organizations one way or the other. We have a lot of SGA members. Congratulations, you're involved in, the, in an organization. There's plenty of us who are in multiple organizations. And if, you're in, if you've been in multiple organizations, you can see certain disconnects between organizations and, and what that can mean for organization membership and what that can mean for the organization uh, community as a whole. So we want to have some entity that can help branch the, those uh, uh, barriers, those differences, and get organizations talking to each other um, in, in a way that's meaningful and impactful to their constituencies. We want to coordinate with the Office of the We Mean Green Fund on a policy review of UNC practices to see how we can mean green as a university. We want to continue with discussions with UNC administration on diversity within faculty and staff. That's something that the SGA has been discussing for many years. It's something that we will be discussing as a continuing effort. And we want to continue meeting with leadership of minority-focused organizations to identify needs and connect organizations to resources as possible. Zoe has been taking up a, a very uh, big effort on that, and I do appreciate all of Zoe's work on that front. There's so much that the SGA is doing and will do to help students. However, we are only as effective as the students who share their concerns with us. We want to talk to you and learn more about who you are and the issues that you face on campus. As students, we understand the importance of a safe and pleasant environment for us to learn and grow. Let us help you thrive in that environment at UMC. Come to our Senate meetings. Meet with us at Union 344. We will make the time to talk to you if you visit us because you are the priority to us. Come check out our town halls. We're, we're going to have plenty. We've had at least 14 town halls and dorm halls, and we're getting a lot more set up. And follow us on social media uh, at UNT SGA so that you're aware of what's going on at UNT and how you can get involved. The state of the undergraduate student body is a time to guess it. Talk about the state of the undergraduate student body. I know I've been doing a lot of talking. So what is the state of the undergraduate student body? Well, as an executive branch, we've been talking to people and have been gathering input about what UNT students, about what UNT means to them and how it can be better. So 
that stand this new body. It is resilient, but in need of support. It is active, yet cautious, and concerns about the impact of COVID-19. It is passionate, yet at times lacking in sufficient opportunities for meaningful expression. It is caring, yet faces unprecedented threats to the campus's safety. There are many words to, to describe our amazing UNC community, and just as many of just words to describe, to describe the concerns which UNT students face. We must protect and empower the best of our experiences and address the concerns which threaten that very experience. We must take tangible action to make the UNT community what we expect of it. That is our purpose, and I hope that you join us in that mission. Thanks for being with us tonight, and I'll just hand it off to Casey for some closing remarks. Thank you so much for coming out today. Uh, on screen, there'll be our social media information. If you ever want to reach out to us, um, you can DM us or email any of us or come into the office. So, um, sorry, I'm a little off of After I'm done, there'll be a reception in Union 333, the Jade Ballroom, where you can talk to some members of the Student Government Association as well, grab a bite to eat. Thank you for coming out tonight. Woo!